What's going on you guys? Keep me on the camera here and today I'm gonna to do a video that I have needed to make for a long time. A conversation that I've needed to have with you guys for a year that I have been avoiding, that I have been denying in my own head, that I can't deny anymore. Uh, we have to have a very serious conversation about my channel and the future of it on YouTube. And right off the bat, I'm not gonna leave you guys hanging. I am not leaving YouTube. I am not deleting my channel. I'm not quitting YouTube. I'm gonna still be here for you guys. But there are changes that are coming to this channel for 2019. And I wanna talk about that for a minute. I wanna talk about the future. But before we talk about the future, we gotta spend a few minutes looking at the past. We're gonna have to look back on 2018, which is undoubtedly the worst year of my life. In 2017, I lost my father and I thought, there's no way that 2018 could top that. Like, there's absolutely no way. And so I entered 2018 very optimistically. I really thought that this was gonna be my year. and <laughs> That is not how it happened, you guys. 2018 was filled with depression and anxiety and Sometimes I would just wake up at three o'clock in the morning and I would cry and I would pace and I would try not to wake up Bridget because I was afraid of what she would think about seeing me like this. And guys, I wrote a song about it on Ashes called 3 a.m. This was the worst year of my life. And before we get into anything about 2019 or beyond that, I wanna talk about that. So guys, here is a mashup, a little montage video of my year. And right off the bat, it's not gonna be as happy as everybody else's. Everybody else had videos of them doing all kinds of fun stuff and having a good time and mine's gonna have a little bit of that But for the most part, I had a pretty rough year guys. Here's a wrap-up of keep behind the camera in 2018 And so dad, I wanted to apologize to you personally here. Sorry I'm Really sorry that I didn't listen that I got involved in it. Sorry I pace around at night I face the light to brace for death I might absent mind to smile at my girl So she don't know I cry alone beside her While she sleeps and dreams of happy times I'm wiping tears and trying not to wake her Dang, I hate to die, but here I am again At 3 a.m. to get my head around the idea That someday I won't be here And it's hard Oh God, I feel so scarred I'm scared as hell to face myself My mind rips me apart, I start to doze Listen man, I get it, I'm so lucky I was given A chance at happiness to find a dream And then I lived it, but I'm getting Sick of it because I visit vids I made with dad Like every day he's gone and so I miss him And like every day I drop down on my knees and pray I say his name, but I know the truth He's gone and so he It's hard to look back like that. It's really, it's really hard to reflect back on such a bad year, but there it is, you guys, my 2018. And I wanna talk about where it all went wrong because there is a very specific point in time that I can pinpoint where I really started to, I don't wanna say lose my touch with reality, but I really started to, I started to change. I left December and I thought, there's no way it could get any worse, okay? I lost dad. There's no way that my feelings could be any worse than what I just felt. So following here on out, it's only gonna be uphill. And January was great. I loved January. There was so much love and support. And I had this optimism that I hadn't felt. And I was so like happy for the first time in a long time that 
I thought the future was so bright. And February comes and it was great. And I was like, wow, this is another great month. I am really handling the passing of my father well. I shot the video for See You Soon and I was hanging out with PFE and things were so good. And then March hits. And March is where it all went wrong. Uh, St. Patrick's Day to be exact. I was sitting there and I was like, it's time to upload an unreleased Anger Grandpa video. How about this corned beef and cabbage video that he filmed for St. Patrick's Day and I was going through it and I was editing it and I was watching it. I was just watching in awe because he was so good. You know, he was such a natural on camera and I never took the time to appreciate that while he was alive. And I did, I always knew my dad was really good on camera, but watching that video reminded me, you know, after March, things really took a turn for the worse for me. I just got sadder and more depressed and everything started changing from my physical appearance to my emotional state. I was becoming a different person that I wasn't aware of. And, you know, to your credit, a lot of you guys were. A lot of you were writing me saying you're worried about me, you're seeing a change and you're hoping that, you know, I can bounce back and I wasn't seeing it. I, I thought you guys were wrong and so I was looking at you like you were trolls and trying to not help me but drag me down. And I was lashing out at the wrong people and for that I want to apologize to you guys uh, for treating you all like trolls when you weren't. You know, that was something in me that... I couldn't wrap my head around and now I see it for what it was. Now I see that you guys were trying to help me, that you were worried about me and I spit in some of your faces for that and I apologize. I had a rough year. <laughs> 2018 was a really bad year for me you guys and I kept getting in worse shape and I developed diabetes and Bridget was crying with me and she was depressed and she started drinking more and we started fighting and breaking up. Like if you look back, we broke up a bunch of times last year and that had nothing to do with clickbait or lying for vlogs. Guys, we genuinely were breaking up all those times because we were just unhappy and we confused our unhappiness for life as our unhappiness with each other and that really rubbed off on our relationship and it was in a negative way. We almost broke up for good a couple of times this year or last year and like I don't know where I would be without her and I'm so happy that it never came to that because she has been my rock this entire time. I, I've genuinely needed Bridget more than she knows. I've needed a lot of people this year. I tried really hard to hide my emotions as much as I can. You know, Bridget really was the only one that saw the real me. Like sometimes I would turn on the camera and I would smile. What's going on you guys? Kid behind a camera here and today is another happy day. But inside it wasn't. Inside I was falling apart. Inside I was not happy. <laughs> inside I didn't want anybody to see because I was so afraid that they would judge me and I would hide it. And I showed Bridget. She saw the brunt end of my depression and anger. And I am so sorry for that, Bridget. I'm sorry that you were the person I lashed out on the most. And I am so sorry for that. You didn't deserve any of that, babe. You were going through depression too. You know, you lost Lazy this year, last year. Last year sucked, man. Lazy went to a vet for a standard procedure. I think it was like a, it was a dental thing he went for and his heart was just so weak that he passed under anesthesia instantly. And me and, you know, Kim was here at the time and we were all gonna go downtown and film a bunch of videos and we got a phone call from the vet and they said to come say goodbye because he was gone. And Bridget was so hysterical and she was telling them to keep trying to keep him alive, keep working, keep working. And when we got there, he was gone. And we walked into the room and there he was laying there and you only saw Lazy happy. He was always so bouncy and chirpy and to see him just laying there wrapped up in a towel, it was a hard sight to see. And we said goodbye to Lazy this year. So last year we said goodbye to my father. This year we said goodbye to Lazy who had so much unconditional love that it's hard to imagine life without him. The rest of the year was just filled with depression and depressing vlogs and just 
heartbreak and very little triumph. We had our moments where we were happy and we had our moments where we were sad and we were fighting and things were just really falling apart. And I really didn't think there was gonna be a place for me on YouTube in 2019. Genuinely, I thought that this video was, what the f Oh, thanks a lot, Felix. You scared the crap out of me. <laughs> I'm totally humiliated by that. Bridget is not home right now. So when that door opened, I was like, oh my God, a ghost. Like, I was like, Michael, you've done it. You caught a ghost on camera, kid. No, it was my cat pushing the door open. <sighs> you know, I really didn't think there was gonna be a place for us on YouTube in 2019. Number one, because I was so depressed. And number two, I just didn't feel like I was putting out my best content. I, I didn't think that I was doing as good as I could and I didn't understand why. And part of me just thought, maybe it's just not for me anymore. You know, I made the promise to dad and I would always keep it. I would always be a YouTuber, but maybe less of one. And I'm not saying that my content last year was bad. There were a lot of videos that I enjoyed making and I enjoy going back and watching. But at the same time, was it the absolute best I could do? Definitely not. And you guys knew that. You guys talked to me about it and you were telling me and I was just looking at you as trolls and not listening. And for that, again, I apologize. Not all of you were trolls. And I saw you as such. And for that, I apologize. I hope you guys can forgive me. Uh, I was in a different headspace last year that I couldn't explain, but I wanna tell you why I am no longer in that headspace because something really good happened on December the 10th. And I know what you're thinking, December the 10th, that's the anniversary of your father's death and you're right. I was sitting there crying because I lost dad and it was December the 10th and it had been a year and I was so sad and broken and suddenly a light bulb went off. And I don't know what like caused it. I don't know what made me like suddenly just wake up but I told myself Michael you cannot fall apart you can't do this you're falling apart right now and your father would be so unhappy with you and I talk a lot about that in the song comeback you know you can't afford to fall apart you can't do this to yourself look at you you are a shell of the person that you used to be. You need to get up from the ashes and rise again because right now it is depressing to look at you. You are not the person that you used to be. And it rang so true. You know, there I was on December the 10th and suddenly I felt a spark in me that I hadn't felt in a long time. It was hope. And if you guys start watching the videos after December the 10th, I hope you can see a change in them. There was a definite change in those videos. And yeah, there was a lot of clickbait and I apologize for that, but I can't stop doing clickbait. YouTube is preventing me from not being able to do clickbait. And I apologize to you guys for that, but I'm hoping going forward, the content's good enough that you don't care about clickbait, right? Cause I gotta still do it. I'm sorry. You know, 2019 ain't get rid of clickbait, okay? But I'm hoping that you guys will enjoy the content more and the sting of clickbait will be a little less. And I think that's been the problem is that, you know, I clickbaited you and some of you didn't even like the video. So hopefully you'll at least like the video and not hate it and hate me. You know, the day that I did the video with Keemstar, that night I got a call from McChuck and I guess, and he was driving around delivering graphic novels to his fans and driving to Ohio and Pennsylvania and, he called me and I feel like he could sense that I was sad or something because he called me and you know, it's not that we never talk, but he never calls me randomly at three o'clock in the morning. So I felt like he could sense there was something off about me and he calls me and we just start talking about YouTube and, and our place in it. And he said so much stuff that really opened my eyes to everything. And I haven't had a, like the opportunity to tell him how much that phone call meant to me. So what I'm telling him now, Jesse, that phone call was so important to me that you have no idea, man. <laughs> like, imagine a group of friends sitting at school, sitting around the lunchroom, and they're talking about their favorite YouTubers. And they're talking about Keemstar and David Dobrik and Roman Atwood and Logan Paul. And yeah, nobody's talking about Kid Me on a Camera. Nobody's admitting that they're watching Kid Behind a Camera because I have done serious damage to my reputation on YouTube. And it's my own fault that I've done it. You know, when dad was alive, he was angry and he was destructive and he was mean. And my character in reflection of that was sad and scared and whiny and a big baby, I guess you could say. And when dad passed away, I didn't grow from that. 
So if you look back at my story arc as a person, not a character, because a lot of people are going to look at that and say, it's fake! That's not what I'm saying. I just mean in a general sense, a character arc. You will see that there I was in a trailer park with my father, with nothing. And through a lot of hard work and perseverance, we get out of the trailer park. And suddenly we're making a little bit of money and suddenly things are looking good. And then suddenly we hit a million subscribers and I'm able, pay, I'm able to give dad money every month and take care of him and, and buy him things that he wants that I've never been able to do in my life. And then I bought him a house. And then I bought him his dream car and life is good. And then he passed away. When dad passed away, I should have grown as a person. And I realized that I haven't. I'm still this whiny little kid. And I've got to change that about myself. I don't know what it is in me that makes me act this way. Why do I cry when I shouldn't be? Why do I do the things that I do? And I want to stop. I want to grow. And I want to be somebody that you guys can be proud of. I want you guys to sit around a lunchroom one day and say, yeah, I watch Kid Me on a Camera. That's what I want. I don't want you guys to be embarrassed to admit that you're a fan of my channel anymore. So I'm going to do what I can to make better content for all of you. And I realize this is a long video and a lot of people may not have gotten here. So if you have, smack the like button right now. Leave a comment below saying that you got here. I want to see all the diehard fans. I want to see all the people that are willing to watch it all the way through to hear what I'm talking about. Guys, smack the like button if you made it here. And if you did, I love you so much. You guys have been so influential to me. Thank you guys so much. So what am I talking about? What's the point of all this? What does this have to do with 2019? Well, you guys, I've got big stuff in the works in 2019 and I can't talk about it right now. We're going to talk about it in the coming months, but there is a huge project that I can't wait to share with you guys that I'm doing in 2019 and I'm so excited and I'm so I'm happy, you guys, and <laughs> I can't wait to bring you on board with me to be a part of this process. Thank you guys so much for everything because none of it would be possible without you, but what else? What's coming in 2019 for the Kid Behind the Camera channel? Well, I do have some bad news, <laughs> and I've been alluding to this for a little bit now. Um, I can no longer be a daily vlogger, and I want to apologize to you guys for that. But it's for you guys that I can't do it. I'm not uploading the best content for you guys right now, and I want to change that. I want to fix it. And the only way to do that is to no longer be a daily vlogger, is to no longer be stuck in the machine where I have to upload every day. Because if I'm stuck into that machine where every day I got to upload, every day I got to upload, every day I got to upload, I don't have the time to reflect on what I'm uploading or think about it or take the time to mentally prepare for a video that you guys deserve. So I want to upload the best content for you guys. So because of that, I can no longer be a daily vlogger, but I will be a semi daily vlogger. I will be here multiple times a week. I just want to take the time to put out better videos for you guys because you deserve it. Guys, you deserve the best me that I can be. And I haven't been that the past year. And I want to be that again. I want to be a channel you can be proud of, you can tell your friends about, that you enjoy, that you want to watch. And I can't wait to show you some of the ideas that I have. I have a ton of ideas. I've taken a couple of days off and the ideas are flowing. So guys, I can't wait to put all that on to you. I can't wait to show you what's going on, what we're working on, what the future holds for keeping on a camera. And I want to thank you guys for being there. So guys, that is my 2018 slash 2019 update video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you made it this far, smack a like on this video. I love you guys. To my fans, thank you so much for the support and the love. I love you guys so much. To my friends, thank you so much. You've seriously been there in ways that I can't thank you enough for. Paul Heyman, uh, something you did in New Orleans for me was... Amazing. Thank you, dude. I love you so much. I love your family. You guys are amazing. Uh, to McJargonuggets and Keem and Boogie2988 and my YouTube family slash real life friends, thank you so much. You mean everything to my family. Bridget, thank you so much. I love you. Guys, here's the 2019. Here's the bigger things. I love you so much. And I'm sorry that it's a long, dragged out talking video, but I wanted to give you an update and talk about this year because big things are coming. Stick with Kibby on the camera because I promise 
things are gonna get pretty crazy. You have no idea how crazy, but trust me, things getting crazy. Things getting lit, okay? Things are getting lit. That's all, 